So the first time that I ever got hurt, like really hurt or injured playing hockey, was my second year ever of junior hockey. It was in Niagara Falls. I was playing for the Canucks, my hometown, and I broke my clavicle. I think it was the, it's actually hard to remember. I think it might have been the left side. But the following year, my first year in the OHL, I had my first of many concussions. But this one was probably the most serious one. They're all serious, but this one was like, whoa. I got hit from behind. My head went against the glass. Completely like bell rung, just just like a movie. You guys seen the boxing movies where the you know the the main character gets hit in the face and it's just like ding. That happened when I came to. I was on the ice, like face down on the ice, and couldn't remember a thing. Like complete amnesia. So much so that I scored a goal earlier that game. I had no idea. I couldn't remember for the life of me that I scored a goal. That's not something that you forget as a hockey player trust when i say that scoring a goal is it's euphoric it's the best feeling in the entire world you don't forget when you score a goal so it was pretty bad over the course of my career i went on to play many years after that i've had too many injuries to count a lot of minor ones like getting my teeth knocked out a couple times too many stitches to count too many strains pulled groins hip flexors i had a slight tweak of my MCL one year, more concussions, more bruises, bumps, pulled my oblique twice actually. I had the start of a uh, oh, sports hernia, that's what I was looking for. Um, wasn't too serious, just needed some rest and, and rehab. The most serious injury, aside from the concussions of course, was my right humerus, broken completely in two pieces. That happened midway through my career when I was still playing in North America. Contract season, end of the year, worst possible time to have a career-threatening injury. I was taking a D to the net, fresh ice, like second shift of the second period, so the ice was fast. I was taking a D to the net on a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, first one of our uh, us and gentlemen, everybody's alright. Looks like everybody is. Oh! Aaron Nolan's taken down. He went crashing hard up against the end boards and is not getting up. Oh boy. I was going so, so fast and I was in a position two. where, like, I knew while it was happening, there's no getting out of this. Brace for impact. And there was just a big, big pop and big impact and I remember I just got up and I was sitting on my butt just like I am now but my legs were straight because I was on the ice and I looked down and it feels like I'm sitting like this just just like this with my hands in my lap and I look down and this arm is like back that way <laughs> and at that moment I was in you know in shock like didn't feel didn't feel the injury at all and i realized what happened and i was just like oh and i laid back down on the ice and it all happened so fast the trainer was right there in the blink of an eye it felt like and he's like what's wrong what's wrong and i'm like it's bad it's bad my arm i'm like get me morphine it's gonna start hurting soon and i kept saying that and it was it was traumatizing for sure like it was it's pretty wild to look down and see your arm like all dismembered and a couple teammates the trainer and teammate got me up and i was like this around them and they were skating me off the ice and my arm i just felt the, it was dangling like this like literally dangling and the bone i felt it like and that made me pass out i just no pain, no pain, just that feeling. I got nauseous and I just, and I open my eyes, I'm on my back and I just see my teammates all looking down at me. And uh, they were just like, they looked, their faces looked white too, like I'm sure mine was. Anyways, that was a bit of a tangent, but that was my, probably the most serious injury. Career went on, got my teeth knocked out a second time. Just so many bumps and bruises and ice packs, like it, 
you guys get the point. I've had a lot of injuries. And the point of all of this, the point of, of, of all this to this point is that when you get hurt as an athlete, when you get hurt as a professional athlete, you have all the resources. You have all the resources to get you back in the lineup as, as quickly as possible. You don't worry about a thing. It's like, this is what's wrong with you. Show up. A, B, C, D, those places, this time, get these tests, and they just point you around. And before you know it, you're, you're back playing games. So what happens when you get a you know, semi-serious injury when you play men's league in New Brunswick? <laughs> what do you do then? By the way, yeah, I still play a little bit of hockey. It's senior A. Got hit from behind probably five weeks ago now, five and a half weeks ago. Hit from behind, pretty bad. Actually very, very thankful that I only escaped with a separated shoulder. Separated shoulder wasn't that bad, AC joint. But when you get hurt in a province where you hear nothing but complaints about the healthcare system, what do you do? What do you think? I know what I thought, quite frankly, was, oh shit. Like literally, as soon as it happened and I knew it was serious on the ice, you know when it's, it's a serious injury. I was like, oh, New Brunswick, New Brunswick. <laughs> but to my surprise, everything is okay and I got cared for and the care was good it's what I expected okay so here I am at uh, the St. John Regional Hospital I actually drove uh, you know I just put in hospital and in, in the GPS I used ways and it took me to I think it's St. Joe's St. Joseph's um, uptown um, which was the closest location to where we are in St. John on east side um, you know, you don't really pay attention to these things in, until they happen, going to the hospital. I'm not, I never paid attention to the hospital, where it was, the hours, a little bit foolish, but yeah, I, I definitely learned my lesson. But St. Joe's, long story short, is closed. So, um, I did reroute myself. I find m myself now at the regional hospital. I, I just parked. I ended up driving around the hospital and I ended up finding, uh, the public parking, but it wasn't it wasn't easy to find like it's dark it's night now um but when you want to get in there like my shoulder right now is separated it's just like where's the signs like where's the signs this should be very easy where are the signs but i ended up finding it so i'm gonna go in now i have no idea what time it is i'm prepared i ended up leaving the rink and going home first to get um some snacks get my phone charger like a portable one Got my book, got some water. Um, I'm prepared, you know, I'm prepared to be here all night. They warn you about the healthcare system in New Brunswick, so this is gonna be my first, my first taste of it. It is midweek, Wednesday. It's probably like nine o'clock if I had to guess. Okay, so it's actually 9.37. I'm going in, you guys can see the Emerge right behind me. Gonna go get some x-rays done and uh, hopefully I'm not here all night. Yeah, I waited a little bit in, in the ER, but that's expected. In Ontario, I've been to the ER as well, and I've, I've waited. You wait. Okay, quick update. It is uh, 1.30. I'm still here. I've been triaged. I'm just waiting now, waiting. A lot of sick people in there. Definitely not a fun place to be, but I'm happy I uh, was prepared with some snacks, book, podcast, audiobook. Did some soul scrolling um, on the socials. <sighs> I'm not sure how much longer I'll be here. This is what I expected. That's it's what I expected. So I think that's across the board in Canada. It, it has to be. That's you know free free healthcare. You know people just go into the ER when they have a, a runny nose. But I got my X-rays. Um, I spoke with a doctor. It's it's a pretty routine type of injury. So this isn't you know for you folks who have. Uh, you need specialized care, okay, and I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. New Brunswick is probably not going to have the same resources as, say, um, you know, like Toronto or Montreal or Vancouver. That's just how it is. Okay, it's uh, 2.45. I have a sling. <sighs> For the little things. 
for the semi-serious stuff, separated shoulder, broken bone, sprained ankle, that kind of thing, you're going to be fine in New Brunswick. You're going to be completely fine. You're not going to die on the side of the road. We have walk-in clinics here, which are good. You know what? I should mention, we don't have a doctor. I know a lot of you guys have asked us about that. We don't have a doctor. We haven't tried to get a doctor. Is that um, irresponsible? Maybe, maybe not. Jess and I maybe approach it an unconventional way. Um, we know for anything serious, we get shot, heaven forbid, you know, something like that, something ridiculous, like we're not going to bleed out in the street. We're going to get cared for. All the other stuff, we, I guess this is kind of private stuff. We don't have any medications. We don't have to go see the doctor on a routine basis. That's just not, it's, it's not part of our lives right now. Yes, we're aging, we're gonna get old, maybe we need to see the doctor. At the same time, there's a lot of preventative things you can do to increase your chances of not seeing a doctor. This, I'm not a healthcare professional, guys, okay? I make YouTube videos. I'm just telling you, there's maybe a different approach to the whole um, healthcare in, in New Brunswick uh, topic. But this video was inspired by Lesson Wendy. Lesson Wendy, if you guys are watching, I loved your video. Less, guys, if you haven't seen the video, I'm gonna link it below. Go check out the video because Les was ranting about this. Everyone complaining about the healthcare system in New Brunswick and the, and the flaws. And guys, there's no place is perfect. There's literally no place that's perfect. But Les made a good point. And he brought up some statistics from Stats Canada that showed, and this is uh, province to province, it showed the percentage of Canadians that don't have a family doctor. And the lowest percentage of people was Ontario. And the second was New Brunswick, believe it or not. I was shocked. I had to go check myself. I went on and, and sure enough, and I do wanna be clear here, stats, stats. There's a quote by Mark Twain on stats. This is the quote from Mark Twain. There are three kinds of lies. Lies, damned lies, and statistics. I fell in love with this quote, I guess you could say over the past two years. But I digress. So don't rely so heavily uh, on those stats. They give you a little bit of context, but I did I did find it interesting, okay? that That's all, you guys can go check it out for yourself. I'll leave the link in the description below. I don't know what else to say about healthcare in New Brunswick aside from serious things, you're gonna get care. The not so serious things, flus, colds, cuts, stitches, you're gonna get care. The mid-tier type of injuries, separated shoulders, sprained ankles, you fall out of a tree house when you're eight, the doctor is gonna see you and put a cast on you guys, you're gonna be fine specialized care you're one of those people who is in you know there's less than one percent there's less than half a percent of, of you with this type of chronic illness yeah see that's where yeah that's where new brunswick's healthcare system may maybe you're better off in a bigger city maybe you are that's a decision that you will have to make for yourself. You guys have been asking us about the healthcare system in New Brunswick since we started making videos over a year and a half ago. And here it is. Anyways, guys, I, I think that's it. That's all I, I really want to say. It's been a while. I know we're going to get back to making videos real soon. This is the start. So if you made it to this point in the video, I love you guys. I love you so much. And yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Like the video, subscribe if you haven't. I'm out of here, guys. It's getting late. Peace.